Today I'd like to show you how to use our sound velocity and tide import templates so that you can load in text files of sound velocity and tides in whatever format that is convenient for you. To launch our sound velocity file editor, you can either right click on the sound velocity tab and say import new sound import sound velocity files or you can launch the sound velocity editor from the bathymetry tab up in the toolbar. When you first launch the bathymetry editor, or excuse me, the sound velocity editor, you get a blank cast. You can manually enter in information uh, that we need, or we can import it from a text file. Now the text, uh, the format that we're going to be working with today is from a Seabird, uh, S, or the Seabird SBE19+. Plus. And this format, I've got it opened up here in my text editor, has, starts off with a header that's quite long and detailed. It's in XML. Then there are a bunch of columns uh, that are labeled. And then finally on line 223, the actual tabular sound velocity and depth information are presented. Looking at this file, it looks like the file goes down to about 197 meters. And then we have the upcast in here as well. A lot of people only want to collect the downcast, um, and we have some tools in SonarWiz to, to uh, edit that. Or you can actually just physically modify the file in your text editor. Another thing to note about this uh, file is it's very high resolution. We have several samples per centimeter in some cases. As the file is going down, uh, let's see, it's still floating around at the top. So here's the cast. So it's actually about every 40 centimeters or so, it's collecting a new cast. And when it slows down here at 197, it's just bobbing up and down there. We also have some tools in our sound velocity editor to bend this. We don't need centimeter level resolution for ray tracing. Oftentimes, uh, it's perfectly sufficient to have one value every meter. So, to begin, click the New File button, go to File, Import, and then select our CNV file. Initially, it'll open up with a preview on the left, preview of the file we were just looking at in our text editor. And on the right, we have a list of predefined templates. By default, SonarWiz is only set up with three defined templates. There's a text file, a CSV format, and a log and velocity format, but no CNV format. So we're going to need to make one up, but it's actually pretty easy to do. So we'll start with create a new template, and the editor switches over to the manage templates. We're going to create a name, and we'll call this the CNV format. Seaver. Now we know from looking at our text editor here that the data doesn't actually start until deep into the file. Right here on line, line 222 is the end of the header, and then on line 223 is when the table starts. So we've got 222 header lines. What, as soon as you start entering information into your template, the preview updates to show you what you've done. It's really handy. So when we added the 222 header lines here, it blanked out in gray what the example template would say is all header lines. And notice it doesn't actually start the columns until right when we wanted it. So you can go up and down and see how this is fine-tuned where the header is. So now we need to add a column for the sound velocity. So we'll click under fields, we'll say plus. And the first one is going to be velocity, and then click OK. Now, it looks like it took too much information. It highlighted everything in blue here, and we only wanted it to highlight that first column. So we can click under the field and click the edit button, and it opens back up again so we can make a change. And see the Field type is right, it's velocity, but it didn't get the delimiter right. There's no commas in here. In fact, what we've got is 
sequence of spaces. So we use that. Now we click OK. Now the column looks right. So it's highlighted the column in blue, and the delimiter, the thing that separates the columns, is in red. So now we need to add the depth column. Click plus, field settings dialog shows up. Depth, again it's a sequence of space, and click OK. Since we're not interested in any of the remaining columns, we'll just skip that, and we're just going to leave it those two. There's a couple other things I want to change. If we go to additional options here, we have both a down and an up cast. And it looks like the down cast goes to about 197 meters. So we'll say, accept only the down cast, only the first 197 meters. The other thing I think is worth doing is binning the sound velocity profile. And this will reduce the volume of information in the cast. What I see here is a very high resolution cast, which is usually not, not necessary for a deep water ray tracing. We can say, just do one meters. We'll have a sample every one meter. And what it, SonarWiz will do is bend up all the values that fall within a meter and give you the median value. So click import. So we're just gonna get the downcast to 197 meters and we're gonna bend it every one meter. And we click import. So our cast now is populated. We've got the nice sound velocity curve plot up here at the top. We've got what looks like 180 samples. That's far different than the actual cast, which had 3,509 samples down at the bottom, less the 200 header lines. So that looks good. So we need to give it a name. We'll call this SVP. Uh, Look back here in our text file, see when was this cast made? It looks like it was July 18th, 2014. So we'll say 2014.07. July. July 18th. And the time was 13.16. Now enter it down here. This tells this actually tells SonarWiz July 13, 16. And do we know the location? If we know the position of the cast, we can type that in as well, but I don't see that here. I don't see it. If you have the position, you can type it in as a latitude or longitude. In fact, uh, the exact format for uh, how the latitude and longitude are entered is in the settings dialog, whatever's convenient. So now that we've got our cast, we've got a time, that's critical to have the time in there. Notice that it tells you in the description where what file you imported it from. Now we click uh, Save, and it will save it in SonarWiz's XML format. Now the next time we want to load a CNV file, let's start a new one, click New, File, Import. Now this happens to be the same CNV, but if we open it, we'll notice that SonarWiz has saved our template. So from now on, we have a CNV format template. We just click the Format and Import, and it will import the dialog, import it for us. So that's how you use the sound velocity editor templates. And it's almost exactly the same for a tides. So let me show you a tide. So we'll close this. Again, we click on tides, edit, and import tides. All right, so we go to new, file, import. By default, it looks for high pack TDX files, but we can have it for everything. Let's import, uh, let's click this TID file, open it. Usually that's a Keras format, but in this case it does not look like it is. So what we've got here is a header, and then we have a date, time, and then the water level. So let's uh, create a new template for this. 
I'm just going to call it uh, new Clarenville. How many header licenses have 10? Nope. So I'll use the up arrow here. I'm looking at the preview screen. So now we've got it. It's got 24 header lines. Click plus under the fields. And what we have is a date, a space, a time, a sequence of spaces, and then the water level. So let's do date first. Tie date. It's in year slash month slash day. And then it has a space afterwards. Click OK. Now we're going to add the time. Tied time. It's in 24 hour format. And it has a space afterwards. And then we have the water level. Oop, it looks like it's not just a single space. And here, let's do. Tide height. This one's followed by a new line. Now, if it likes it, click import. It says processing. Ooh, it's a big file. So there we go. We can fill out the rest of the information. Tide file. If you know the position, type that in and any offsets that you need for time and click save. And just like with the tide, or excuse me, the sound velocity editor, the next time you import one of these files, SonarWiz will remember the template that you saved. And you can just click that and click import, and it will bring it right back in. So that's how you do our tide and import, or tide and sound velocity import editors. So now we have a tide file, so right click there add an existing file. Here's our tide file that we just saved and our sound velocity file that we just created right there. So that's how you do it. Thank you.